President, I yield the floor. Madam President. The Senator from Missouri. Madam President, I just was able to watch the administration climb the inflation rate cliff. Um, and I want to talk more about this problem of what happens when the administration ignores the warning signs that are going to produce the kind of results that they have produced. You know, Democrats all by themselves, after five bipartisan bills the year before to try to fight COVID and save the economy, decided that a recovering economy needed even more help to recover and passed a $1.9 trillion spending bill in March of last year. And that money almost immediately went out. Um, you know, we talk about $1.9 trillion. I don't even know quite, Madam President, how we compare that in a way that people can think about it. The normal annual spending for the whole discretionary budget is $1.47 trillion. So in one bill, in addition to the money that the government would be spending that year in the budget that we vote on, the discretionary budget we vote on, Democrats decided we're going to spend that much and more. We're not going to spend just twice the normal discretionary spending. We're going to spend twice the normal discretionary spending plus another 25 percent or so. You know, we spend every year about 700 last year, we spent $780 trillion to defend the country. That's a third of the money, roughly, in the $2 trillion American Recovery Act. We spent less than $700 billion to do everything else that we vote on. All of the other discretionary, all the debates we have here about spending are spending that results in a little less than $1.5 trillion of spending that are part of the normal budget. So when you double that, and then you add to the doubling of that, you put all of that into the economy at one time, you're clearly going to create a situation where you have inflation. That's what Democrats in previous administrations, uh, like the previous, the, uh, the Clinton Secretary, the Treasury, people in the Obama administration all said, this will create runaway inflation. But if that wasn't enough, uh, we hear that they want to spend even more. But over the next year after they passed that bill, inflation kept skyrocketing, uh, cracks kept appearing in the economy. There were plenty of warning signs, but our colleagues on the other side kept pushing to write the biggest check they possibly could and to write another one. Their latest plan is another massive amount of government spending. This one would be really focused on the Affordable Care Act, sometimes called Obamacare. Apparently the Affordable Care Act wasn't all that affordable or isn't all that affordable because if you believe the reason for this bill, almost nobody can afford it. If you don't get insurance at work, it's almost unaffordable. The original health care law, there were governor, government subsidies for people who didn't make much money so that they could afford to be in what turned out to be an overpriced system. Uh, but that law capped how much you could earn and still get a subsidy. The $2 trillion I talked about earlier, the reckless tax and spending spree from March of last year, got rid of those income limits. Apparently the income limits were, no matter how high they were, they weren't high enough, so they eliminated the income limits. Now the amount you get from the government would be based on how big a share of your income you were spending on insurance, no matter how big that income was. One study found that a typical family of four making $106,000 would almost immediately and did almost immediately get almost $10,000 in subsidies. Uh, before that, they got zero in subsidies. 
400% of the poverty level appeared to be enough in the original bill that that's a system that should have provide insurance that people could afford, but apparently it hasn't done that. The insurance on the government exchanges is so expensive in some areas that people making a half a million dollars or more could qualify for thousands of dollars from the government under this new structure. Now this, by the way, is the structure that the next spending bill uh, is supposed to be trying to make permanent, or at least permanent enough that people will get so used to having it they'll never want to give it back. Uh, the bill was called the American Rescue Plan. Its supporters kept telling us it had to be big because there were still people in real need and the economy was struggling. But we now know that while there are always people in need, it's not because the economy is struggling. Now people are in need because the economy is spiraling out of control. And whether it's the gas pump or the grocery store, you're having to make decisions you wouldn't have thought you'd have to make. The health insurance subsidies in particular are meant to be temporary, at least if you believed the, ben the reason that was given when that bill was passed, and would only last till the end of this year. Now, our friends across the aisle want to make these temporary subsidies permanent. For purposes of the law itself, they don't want to admit that, so they say, well, we just want to extend this year for another of couple of years. And by the way, I think we're clear that when we get to the next deadline, once you've had these subsidies for one year, as it turns out, let alone two or three more, the whole idea is to get people so committed to getting this money that you'll, the government will never back up and take it away. It's just a budget gimmick. Everybody knows that, a gimmick to extend the program uh, to further redistribute taxpayer money to people who are making big incomes but have decided it's better for the government to pay for their insurance than it is to pay for their insurance themselves. Now, this doesn't relate to everybody. In fact, the 400% of poverty, which many people thought at the time and still think sounds like an income, you ought to be able to pay your own insurance. And if you can't, there must be something wrong with the health care system. Uh, in fact, last year, my colleague from West Virginia, Senator Manchin, said he had serious problems with another version of this bill because there wasn't a cap. He said, what I, this is his quote, what I see are shell games, budget gimmicks that make the real cost of the so-called $1.75 trillion bill estimated to be almost twice that much during the full time of the bill. So the Congressional Budget Office looked into this health insurance study plan or subsidy plan. They found that when it actually gets extended, this extension over 10 years cost another $250 billion. If we have people who are making more than 400% of poverty, in fact, if we have people who are unlimited in their income, who somehow need to have government help to buy insurance, we ought to figure out what happened with the insurance marketplace that Obamacare created. Um, the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office figure that $36 million of that $250 million would go to people who make more than 400% of poverty, which works out to be about $140,000 for a family of four. Uh, so they also say that 48% of the new people entering the program would be making more income than that $140,000 level. And if you think someone who makes $140,000 is low income, as maybe our friends on the other side of the aisle do, and deserves a handout from taxpayers to buy their insurance, again, I'd say there must be something wrong with the insurance plan. If we've got an affordable health care plan that nobody can afford, that should be our focus instead of focusing on making other taxpayers pay for the unaffordable health care plan rates that we have. The Congressional Budget Office expects 3.2 million fewer people, by the way, to get their insurance on their job if the subsidies become permanent. Why should your employer 
pay for your insurance if the government will pay for it instead? Why would you pay some portion of the cost of your insurance if the government will pay 100% of the cost of your insurance? Another 200,000 people because of this would end up in Medicaid and the CHIPS program, the Children's Health Insurance Program. This is a plan to get people committed to something that just simply doesn't work. All it does is prove what President Reagan said, which once he once said, nothing lasts longer than a temporary government program. So we're going to be discussing the next few days about how we want this one-year program to become another two- or three-year program, which clearly would become a permanent program. Temporary assistance in March of 2021 and the other things in that bill that were spent immediately, that $1.9 trillion bill, fed the fuel to the fire of inflation that we see right now. Combine that with terrible energy policies, and American families feel it every single day. We don't need to do more.